Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another in the SkySwitch webinar series. I'm Andy Abramson, the Chief Marketing Officer of SkySwitch, and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, Corey Stoker, our Vice President of Support, along with our ace when it comes to support, Fareed, who you all know very well from dealing with him. We have a really special webinar today from SkySwitch. You'll obviously, if you're looking at it, you're seeing that we are on camera, at least some of us. So we're really excited about doing our first on-camera webinar for you because today's webinar is really special. It's not just a brand. It's not just another product offering. It's not another new service offering. It's about you and what can help you and what's working and what is, making, what is working in this COVID-19 pandemic era by featuring some of our resellers from around the country who have been doing extremely well. Some are members of our Club 1000, but we picked a handful of them to help you. We call this resellers helping resellers because one of the great things about SkySwitch, and one of the things I learned when I joined SkySwitch a year ago was our community and how our community gathers at Vectors, gets together at other events, so we sort of felt, Emily, Erica, Eric, all of us, we all felt that it was important that the community gets together a little bit virtually using some of the technology that's available to us in order to help you do better, help you hear what's working, and help you understand how some companies in your space, like you, have made the transitions through COVID-19, through the work from home, because we're in unprecedented times. That's why we really feel it's important more than ever that everybody stays strong as a community and helps each other out. I'm gonna be asking our panel what's been working for their business lately, some mistakes that they've made, what they've learned, and more. Um, we have four great, great people. I had a good chance to talk to some of you at, at Vectors. I also have been talking with you leading up to this. Uh, first, and I'm just going to, you know, let each of you introduce yourself. Um, start, we have Dan Crabel from uh, IntelliVoice, Louis LeBlanc from Oregon Phone Systems, Dan Napolitano from Highbridge Communications, and Chris O'Neill from Nettel One Communications. So, Dan Crabel, why don't you just take 30, 45 seconds, talk a little bit, introduce yourself, and then pass it to Louis, and then to Dan and to Chris, round robin, who you are, tell us about your business, where you are, and so forth. Sure. Um, Dan Crable, we're here in uh, Texas, uh, co-founder of IntelliVoice. Uh, I've been in the telecommunication realm for 18 years now. Um, we have another company we started 17 years ago that we did telecommunication consulting. And then about seven years ago, we looked at everything going voice over IP, so we decided to get into this. Uh, my claim to fame with SkySwitch is I was Jason's number two uh, reseller he bought on board. So uh, he brought me over with him. Um, and we've been with SkySwitch now for, I believe, about five years now. So uh, that's a little bit about myself. Good, Lee. Hi, I'm Louis LeBlanc. I'm the owner of Oregon Phone Systems. Uh, we started out doing uh, networking and IT consulting for about 20 years and then started getting asked about uh, voice over IP in 2011. And it was a natural extension of our business. Uh, and since then, we've uh, grown our VoIP business and scaled back the IT side of things. Uh, working with SkySwitch has been fantastic. We started with a, a different provider uh, out of the gate, uh, and it was satisfactory, but it, it wasn't extraordinary. Uh, we've been with SkySwitch probably for about three years. Uh, and one of the things uh, that Andy said is, is the community, uh, which we love. I love meeting resellers, helping resellers. Um, uh, and one of the things a lot of people might not know about is we also have a SkySwitch user group uh, that lets us really connect with each other. So if anybody on the call is interested in joining that user group, uh, you can go to, I set up a link on our website, OregonPhoneSystems.com slash SkySwitch. Uh, and that'll let you join our Slack user group. So it's uh, resellers, uh, helping resellers uh, in real time every day. So I look forward to meeting more of you on, on the Slack channel. Thank you, Louis. Dan Napolitano. Hi, I'm Dan Napolitano. 
Uh, we're from Syracuse, New York. Uh, I founded the Garam Group, which is an MSP about 20 years ago. And in 2014, we spun up Highbridge Communications to meet the telecom needs of our clients. Um, we also started, Louie, with I think the same partner you did and had a little less than stellar experience. But uh, when we went on with SkySwitch, that was a really great experience. There, we're, our philosophy is we're gonna do whatever it takes to make things right for our client. We really don't care whose fault it is, we're just gonna solve the problem. Um, and that's, I think, the most valuable thing we found in SkySwitch is it's the same kind of partnership. It's we're here to solve problems. Um, so that's a little bit about us. Chris? Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris O'Neill. I uh, own Netel One Communications up here in the Boston area, Boston, Mass. And uh, so our company is a traditional VAR. We, were, we started out in 2002 as a uh, Nortel reseller, which then turned into a buyer. And roughly 08, well, that's a little early, probably more like 2010, we swapped over to embrace the voice over IP model. And the big thing with our business, or our uh, business model up here, is we wanted to be, um, be the owner of the paper, so to speak. So it was important to us to find partners that uh, would allow us to really keep, we wanted to maintain the customer. We didn't want to hand them off to a, to a ring central or something like that. So that's where the uh, marriage with Sky Switch uh, is very good for us. We, we also have worked with, with some of the um, other folks that do the white labeling. And I can tell you at this point, we're, we're pretty much, uh, we're glad we found Sky Switch. I'll leave it at that. It's uh, been good for us. I love the, uh, how you bring multiple things to the table and really, you know, allow us to build our business with and bring different widgets to the, uh, to the customers. So we've had, uh, we're very happy with Sky Switch and look forward to working more with everybody. I'm, I'm excited to be included in this. Thank you. Well, it's great that you're all here and, and getting to know you guys over the last week. And then some of you with vectors, uh, last October, what I was all impressed with is how passionate all of you are and how uh, much you care about us, but more importantly about your customer. And we're in very different times today than we were eight months ago when we were in Orlando, talking together, learning together, sharing together. The world has changed. We're in what we call the new normal. So what I wanna do is to help, this is about helping the reseller. So I wanna start with Dan Napolitano. And the first question I'm gonna ask you is probably the last question we talked about. And I want all of you guys to be able to jump in and talk about this. So the question is, Dan, if there's one thing you learned over the last, let's call it the three months since we really got into this with more people working from home, businesses having to transition from the office to another place, maybe not even where they were working from home before, but to maybe a remote uh, home, which is where they're able to work because the kids have to be there and everybody has to be there. What's the one thing that you would have done differently? Because we always say, if we knew then what we knew now. So now that you know, what would it have been? Yeah, it was crazy. It was a simple answer, power supplies. You know, we always put in POE switches so that we don't have two connections going to those phones to keep it clean. Um, so when our clients wanted to move everything to home, we couldn't find power supplies. There was, you, you couldn't get them anywhere. We had probably 20 or so on the shelf, which helped, um, but that was, that was the biggest complication. We had to do, you know, grab POE switches to help people out. Um, so, our, and, and you know, I believe that whenever you experience a bump like that, you know, what is the learning opportunity? So, you know, part of our process now is anytime we sell a phone, we sell it with a power supply. We, we're gonna be putting boxes of power supplies at client locations so that if this happens again, that problem is solved. Louis LeBlanc, what did you learn differently? And by the way, guys, you can't say what the other guy said. I want to hear something different from each of you so that we can all learn more. What was the one thing you learned that if you knew then what you know now, you would be doing differently? Uh, well, I, I definitely agree with Dan. We, we ran into the, to the same thing. Uh, but one of the things we learned is our, our clients were much more open to having multiple devices full time. Uh, one of the nice things with SkySwitch is we can have five devices per extension uh, without additional seat charges. 
Um, and once I started engaging customers who are now going to be living in this new reality, um, almost a hundred percent of them said, so we just have to, you know, just for the one time cost of the phone, we could leave the phone at home. Uh, cause we had clients uh, taking phones back and forth. Uh, they weren't working full time at home. They might've been working at home two, three days a week. Uh, and they just got tired of dragging their phone around. Um, so once we made that, uh, all of our customers aware of that, they really appreciate that. So now we're starting to sell a bunch more phones the last few weeks, uh, just getting customers set up. So now they can have devices wherever they need to work full time. Um, so I, th I think that's a, it, it made us look really good when we were able to tell them we could do that very easily. So what, you, what you're saying is a lot of your customers created a new brand of mobile phone with Yealink or Poly or Grandstream or, or any of the brands that they have on their desk. That became a mobile phone because they were having to take it to and from when really there was an easier solution. So when I'll come back to this with this, Lewis. During the period of time where they were waiting to get second phones or third phones to work from at home, did you find any of them picking up the use of reach UC, the soft client and coming to you for help with configuration or was there any, what was it like around reach UC? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I guess it depends on, on the type of client. Not all of our clients were even aware that a mobile app existed. Um, that there are some situations where we sell to certain businesses that it's, it's just not necessary. So a lot of people didn't even know about it. So we started getting the support tickets of just how, how do we work from home? And then that's when we introduced the mobile app to a lot of clients, the existing clients who knew about it, we didn't hear from them because they just started using the app full time rather than as a ancillary phone. Uh, and I'm sure everybody else can speak to this, that the challenge with the mobile app is of course, their internet uh, at home, uh, as everybody's experienced during the pandemic of just uh, either just overworked or not enough bandwidth or not enough QoS at home. So we, we still struggle with that. We had to put out a blanket email to you know the office manager, basically, of every one of our clients to, to let everyone know, look, this is a best effort product. Uh, it's going to depend on, on these variables. Uh, it's not going to be the same experience you have with the desk phone. So once we kind of set the table uh, with, with those parameters, things kind of calmed down and, and people understood. Um, and as I'm sure other people experienced, turning off Wi-Fi was a big uh, hit for us. Uh, and that at least the, the cellular network tend to, tended to be a little better than a lot of people's home broadband, uh, just where they were. So the, the mobile app really saved us in, in the sense of, I think we may have lost clients had we not been able to have that. Uh, and, and to SkySwitch's benefit, I know, I know there were some capacity issues, you know, when things ramped up, but SkySwitch stepped up and, uh, you know, so I, don't know what, well, I don't know what you guys did in terms of the technical back end, in terms of spinning up more resources, but uh, that, that was brilliant that SkySwitch was able to do that very quickly. Thank you. Dan Crable, what's the one thing that, or two things, that you learned now that you guys wish I knew this before all this started because it would have made my life a lot easier and my customer's life easier. Sure, I think it's uh, from, if I tackle from a support issue, the old KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, we had a ton of tickets come in and people are like, my phone doesn't work. And we're like, what do you mean phone doesn't work? I'm like, well, at the end of the day, they were plugging into the wrong slot on the back of the phone. So, um, you know, they get their polycom and they plug it into, you know, the computer slot to plug it into the ethernet port the back of the phone and so we I mean we must have had 30 or 40 tickets open it was crazy so you know we just came up with a quick doc sent it out to everybody and all of a sudden those started slowing down um, and so that was one of the big things you know from the support side that we learned like yeah we probably should have uh, made that a little bit more clear you know with people taking these phones home so that was kind of one of the big things that we learned and then uh, from a sales perspective um, where we've had some pretty good success right now is, is talking to um, a, lo a lot of restaurants um, that they were hurting um, because they didn't know how to go mobile um, and using all the texting features that SkySwitch has. We've actually walked into quite a few deals just by having the SMS feature and kind of educating our clients on how mobility works from the, from the VoIP side. Um, 
I wish we'd have thought of that in the the beginning of all of this. I think we we could have picked up some more clients, but uh, so th those are kind of my two takeaways. I want to dig a little deeper, and Corey did a great video on our appointment reminder app uh, with restaurants because I know they make up a good chunk of our resellers' businesses around the country. What exactly are you seeing the restaurants doing, and how is it helping them? Which in turn, if you're helping your customer, it's helping your business. Sure, you know, a lot of them be like, hey, uh, you know, you can text menu to this number and it sends the clients their menu. So that was a, a big thing that a lot of my restaurants were doing. Um, and they were also using it far as if you want to place order, just click here and automatically dial into their SkySwitch phone. So those are kind of the two big things people really like because a lot of people are like, hey, you know, I love, you know, well, I'll just use me a casino. It's a local Mexican restaurant, Tex-Mex here uh, that we support, you know, like, hey, can you, uh, what's your menu again? Like, oh, they just, they go, great, just texted this, puts on their phone, they're like, that was awesome. And then they just hit click the dial and boom, it was there. So that was the two big things that the restaurants really took advantage of now. So can, can you put that in the SkySwitch user group that we just heard about earlier as a, just do a little write up about how you did it. As a matter of fact, I think any of this stuff belongs in the user group of, you know, little success stories around it because I have friends who own restaurants and a lot of them are pulling their hair out with, it's only going to be order only. It's only going to be pickup. It's, you know, there's no dining in. Now we're going to open up outdoors. We have a lot of people asking us questions. A friend of mine who has a restaurant in the West Hollywood area, very successful high-end French restaurant. I said, how are you doing? He said, well, last night we were full, but the internet went down. And that pretty much, you know, luckily they store everything and print things out and they were able to at least have the reservations, but you know the the importance of internet right now with everything you you just talked about becomes paramount. Christopher O'Neill, what's the one big thing your big takeaway from the last three months or so of the new normal that you would have done differently with your business, and you are doing different today? Yeah, so you may, you may have seen me. I was I was taking notes and I had to keep crossing them out because you guys kept using up what I was going to say, but. Uh... I will go, I think the easiest thing I would say, and, and Dan, thank you for that uh, heads up with the SMS. That's, uh, I have some restaurants as well. That's, that's some thinking out of the box that we haven't done there. But um, as far as what I would have done different is I would have pushed at the original sale um, a mo a, the use of the mobile app, right? So that way we would have had, because as you guys were, we were floored right out of the gate because rolling everybody out, the easiest thing to do was to put them on the mobile app. And uh, so all the support questions came in with that and getting used to using that. I would have leveraged that more in the original sale to have it have it maybe be a package, a remote user package or something like that. So it would have been a little more seamless and, and would have frankly brought in a little more revenue. That's okay. The biggest thing I would have done. So I'm hearing mobile app. I'm hearing business SMS. I'm hearing sell the power supply when you sell the phone. And I'm hearing know how to support your customers for what may happen, not just what you sold them at the start. Those are four really good starting points. But let's, let's take a little step back. And everybody went through a little bit of pain. I don't think anybody had a walk in the park. Um, what kind of impact, whether it was negative or positive, did COVID-19 present to your business? And if you had a negative hit, how did you overcome that? What would be the, the, the one or two things that, what did it present to you as a business owner? Because you've got other owners on here, many of whom experienced exactly what you did. So let's start with Louis. Why don't you give us a, a story there? Yeah, I, I think like everybody, you know, we, we had an increase in tickets, uh, which we expected just because the way they're going to use the system had to pivot quickly. Uh, but I looked at it as an opportunity. Uh, and that opportunity was to really show the clients how flexible the system was and how fast we could implement change. Um, and to piggyback on what Dan Crable said about his restaurants, uh, we, we actually do very little in the restaurant business. Uh, but our very big success story is we have a, a retail operation that has uh, 12 locations in the fitness industry. And as if any of you have seen the you know, national headlines about certain fitness products, right? It was, it's, uh, I 
actually help their business because everybody's at home wanting to exercise. So they got crushed uh, with phone calls and emails and requests to their website. Um, so naturally they reached out and, you know, wh what can we do here? How do we handle this? How, how can we better manage it? So the first thing that was obvious was they just needed to turn their phones off to stop, to stop them from ringing. So we were able to just to quickly pivot to an auto attendant, record the message that they needed it to say, to direct them to their chat on their website, um, just that they, they can't handle phone calls right now. So they, they really appreciated that. Uh, and then they had to do curbside delivery. Uh, text us when you arrive. So the, the desktop app, the mobile app came in handy for that, still does. The volume of text that, that these guys received was just off the charts. And the SkySwitch system handled it beautifully, all 12 locations, you know, probably a thousand texts a day uh, in and out at each location. So it was a great success story. And, and we kind of took that knowledge and, and uh, reached out to other clients in similar situations. And we've heard back from all of them, just how thankful they were that they were on this system, that they had the ability to make these changes quickly because obviously other systems, especially a, an on-prem system can't do a lot of those things. So, uh, and the, and the, the requests we're getting now uh, from new clients are, are obviously seeing that and they couldn't pivot quickly enough. Uh, so I think all of us are going to benefit from, from this. So, you know, when, when you're selling now, tout those success stories like that of, of not, not just how good the system is in terms of performance, but its flexibility uh, and, and how fast you can turn features on and off and, and really customize it for, for the customer. Chris O'Neill, what did you, what impacted your business the most, Pro, positive, negative, and what challenges came up from it that you saw and how did you react to it? Sure, so being, complete, being completely honest, uh, when it first hit, I, I worried, you know, that we were gonna, so we, we, are, we need X amount of um, one-time revenue every month to kind of keep the lights on when we don't have it completely covered with recurring. So that business dried up, pretty quick, as you can imagine. And, you know, my fear was we're going to have some companies not being able to pay, things like that. But as uh, Lewis just said, it turned out, it, it probably turned out to be more of an opportunity. As, as time went on, as, you know, we were able to leverage the flexibility of the system. And I think people are starting to value it a lot more now. And, it, and it's led to some upsell. Um, if anything, our, our MRC or our MRR has come up over the last few months. And, you know, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable at this point, but I think, you know, if I'm being honest with myself and you guys, I, my first thing, my first thought was it was going to be bad because, you know, we have a lot of small businesses. So as they take the hit, we're going to, we're going to take the hit with them, but uh, it hasn't, hasn't turned out to be that way. I think it's, it's turned into an opportunity. Good for you. Dan Crable, what was your, where did you feel the impact from COVID-19 and what did you do about it? Well, to be honest with you, we didn't get a huge impact here in Texas. I mean, it hit us, right? But um, I was very concerned in the beginning about it. But I mean, really, you know, we, we've got roughly, I think on the Sky Switch platform, 20 some hundred phones, and then I don't know, 1200 soot trunks. We only turned, we only had a, we really didn't turn them down, but we had a, to uh, just get some pricing. We got only about a hundred phones, um, which was very interesting to me. I thought I'd see a lot more than that. Um, and our AP was uh, amazing. I have to give some credit to my girl for that. But uh, so we didn't have any problems with AR or AP at all. Um, everyone kind of pays their bills. So it was great. So that's the great thing about having some monthly recurring revenue come in. And that's all of our business is. So it was great to be in that. Um, the only thing we really saw that I think we have to even now think about is from a sales perspective, from a new sales perspective, um, as, you know, how do we start going after that? and getting to those customers. Um, to mine, restaurants are kind of easy pickings at this point because a lot of them are hurting, um, trying to you know, establish new ways of doing business. So I think A, there's a lot of some cost savings we can bring and some flexibility to the table they need. Um, but you know, quite frankly, I'm kind of looking at some different ways and trying to do some out of the box um, for new sales is some of the things that I'm looking at how do you sell in this new COVID environment? Um, I really do think in the next 60 to 90 days, you know, I, I kind of told Jason this, I think we may see a gold rush uh, per se on the VoIP because everybody's realizing now 
you know, hey, we need to go to this, you know. And uh, I was kind of talking to my partner. I was like, well, I guess all these DR stuff we sell actually works, which I was kind of glad, but I was a little worried about. <laughs> well, we're glad it works, and we're glad it supports. And, you know, Corey, gets, Corey and Fareed get a big thank you for that, as well as Blake and Eric for keeping the network up and running in these uh, difficult times. Dan Napolitano, what was the biggest COVID-19 challenge impact that it had on your business up in Syracuse? Right. Well, <clears throat> our, we really didn't have a, a, a challenge impact. I think it was really more of a positive thing for us. Um, so we're in upstate New York. New York got hit pretty hard. Um, we switched to the work from home model about a week before New York issued their executive order to have everybody stop going to work. Um, so my team was in place. All the bugs were ironed out. We were ready to roll. Um, so when we started getting all these calls from our clients, like Louis said, we were just able to pivot so quickly. Um, you know, that first week, especially the first Monday, was pretty tough. Um, but by the end of the week, it was all done. And the positive thing that came out of it was the overwhelming um, pleasure that our customers had with us. We, we do surveys. Every help desk ticket, um, when it's closed, a survey goes out to the customer. And the scores are one to five, five being the best. Our survey results doubled during that time, and they were almost 100% fives. Um, so we had so much goodwill from our clients because we were able to really solve their problem. Like Louis said, if you had a prem-based solution, you, you were in trouble. Um, so they were so grateful for that, and we sort of leveraged it. We asked people, uh, especially if they wrote a positive comment on the survey, we asked them if they would write a testimonial. So we, you know, from a sales perspective, we've got 10, 15 really nice testimonials as part of our sales process now. Um, where we're gonna capitalize on, you know, this is why you switched to VoIP. Um, so that was really the, the, the big impact that we saw. So I'm gonna, I wanna stick with you for a second. Um, when we talked last week, you talked about transitioning to a work from home model yourself. And we know from surveying that about somewhere between 55 and 60% of our reseller customers already have some percentage of their business working from home. What were some of the lessons learned that you picked up? And then I'm going to, and um, before Dan answers, just by show of hands, Lewis, Dan, and Chris, do you guys, have you guys all transitioned to a work from home model right now? Or are you 50, 50 going into the office? What's your, you know, what, what are you guys doing? Working from home, Chris, yes or no? You're working from home. Dan Crable, working from home. Lewis, working from home. Oh, I always work from home. So you always no work from home. <laughs> okay. So Dan, you made a transition. You went from the office to a work from home model when we were talking last week. What were some of the lessons learned that everybody needs to know? And I'm going to go right around the table and, and have each of you talk about your work from home experience because as somebody who's been working from home since before I was driving, part of the time and all the way through my career or working from elsewhere, not always in an office. I hate offices if I can help it. It's always interesting to hear how people made the transition. So why don't you, Dan Napolitano, give us a little insight there because I know you made a switch. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, we've got 12 people and, you know, our office is fully staffed. We really don't, but people can work from home here and there when they've got to focus on a project. But in general, our culture is to be on site. Um, and that's less about their ability to do their job and more about um, building the culture of our team that we want to translate out to our clients. But so that, you know, the biggest problem for us was equipment when we went to a work from home model. We had everybody take their equipment home. We've since ordered up equipment so that we have duplicates so that people can either work from home or work in the office. Um, but that, that was probably the biggest challenge. We really focus on having resources that are um, not so facility dependent. So, you know, we're already using all of the tools that mean you can work from anywhere. So that was, that was fairly easy for us. It's just, and it's been very successful. Our team is, is really dialed in and we've been, you know, when I was looking at our numbers, especially not just on the phone side of the business, but on the IT side of the business, um, you know, our productivity has gone through the roof with the work from home model. Um, I think that there may be long-term, you know, with a, with a solely work from home model, there might be long-term cultural impacts with the company. 
Um, but we're looking to kind of move forward with a flexible model where, you know, we're going to have days where we're in the office, but there's work from home days too. Lewis, you've been working from home forever, it sounds like. What's the big lesson that came out of COVID-19 that you were able to pass on to your customers who now had to work from home without the option of going into the office? Was there some lesson that came up that, you know, you're a veteran, they're, they're rookies. What's the story you passed on to the young buck? You know, it's it really, I, I actually had a few clients ask those questions. Um, you know, it's just about managing your yourself and your day. And it's a it's a different environment. Sorry, You're uh, it's, a, it's a it's a different environment. Um, so it just requires a, a different mindset. And as you know, since you've been doing it, it it's a certain discipline. Um, you know, because it's very easy when you work from home to to put things off and work on other little things as they happen, and all of a sudden you've lost hours out of your day. Um, so for me, it's, it's just a mindset, you know, when I'm working, I'm working and, I, and I'm not doing other stuff, uh, around the house and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, unlike most of my other fellow resellers on this panel, you know, we're, we're a much smaller operation. Uh, it's just myself and, and my wife, uh, who work in the business. So it's, it's a different model for us. Uh, I would love to have, uh, some more growth where we may support uh, an office staff at some point, but we're just not at that point yet. But uh, it, it's a great business model for us at this point. That's super. That's super. But the 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 customers. I'm sorry. The customers that you had who came to you. Was there any one or two specific areas of help they needed to get up and running? I mean, you talked about focus. You talked about you know having a plan, a schedule, things like that. Was there any technical hurdles that you had to help them overcome, whether it was bandwidth, routers, age of equipment, new equipment, um, modifications to what they already have at home, anything like that? Uh, mainly just getting them power supplies to take phones home. The, the mobile app served us very well. Uh, so, you know, the, the nice thing about ReachUC, it's very user friendly. It, it didn't require us any training. Uh, we have a nice help doc that we put together that I think explains uh, all the features very well. Uh, we had a few clients here and there where, where BLF lights wouldn't work properly on some of the phones. And you know, we ran into the whole SIP ALG thing on, on some people's home routers and cable modems. Um, you know, I, not being in the IT business anymore, I, I, I tried to just distance myself from that and, and kind of, give them a direction to look, but not be the person to try to solve all of those things. And, and they appreciated that. I mean, they, they understand that, you know, it's not our, it's not our problem, but I, I tried to be as helpful as I could, but I decided early on that if I, if I went down that road, then everybody who was going to suddenly be working from home was going to, you know, we were going to be their IT person. Uh, and I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be that, that person. But fortunately for us out here, bandwidth is very good in our area. So we really didn't have a whole lot of problems. It was mainly a few old routers and SIP ALG stuff. But uh, for the most part, it, it, it was very pretty easy transition once everybody understood what tools they needed. Dan Grable, what was the one thing that you saw from your customers in a work from home environment that you had to work on and how did you help them overcome some new challenges for the new work from home type? Well, so I had an interesting discussion uh, with one of my clients because, you know, they're worried about, you know, uh, people not putting in the hours or doing what they're supposed to do. And I said, you know, it's kind of a mind shift and kind of a new way of thinking things. Uh, but like the way we do our companies, we're a results driven company, right? So at the end of the day, we're a sales organization. It's all about results, right? But for my support staff as well, I'm like, at the end of the day, just do your job. I don't care what you do it. If you can do your job in three hours, do your job in three hours, enjoy the rest of your day. And that's how we've always kind of done our company. Um, and, uh, you know, they're available. So I kind of talked to some of my clients about this and some of their CEOs of, like, especially even credit unions. Like, I, I was talking to Marty about this, and, you know, she was all worried about this. And I said, hey, Marty, just try this for a week and see what happens. And tell them it's all results-oriented. So if they're done in six hours and they got two hours left in the day, 
tell them to go hang out with their families. So I just talked to her last week about it, and she goes, Dan, we're moving our whole model to stay at home. My productivity of my employees have gone through the stinking roof because of this. And I said, well, it's kind of a new way of thinking. You've given them some power, and I think you're impressed by not holding over them. Hey, you have to be here eight hours a day. You get your job done. Go do what you need to do. And so it's kind of a, a different ideology of the way you think when people start working from home. I think more and more uh, companies are really going to start looking at that model of, hey, we're results driven. Do your job. I don't care what you do after that. Chris, what about you? What was the what were some of the lessons that you saw that you had to work on to help people working from home? So I have kind of a two pronged answer to that. So. I would like to start first with just just my staff and how we did it. So we we are an office based staff that that had to go uh, remote. And uh, what we did was uh, we actually leveraged meeting manager every day. We'd have a check in, a 9 a.m. check in, and then we'd have a 3 p.m. check in, and um, just kind of make sure everyone was on the same page. That that was very helpful. And again, we too looked to the results oriented, right? So. My support staff, I'm looking to see how many tickets there, how long are people waiting. Um, and then if I move on to um, my customers, one of our, we do a lot of medical practices. So for example, we have a pediatrician that was worried about just that. They have all these nurses that are triaging calls and uh, billing people that need to get things done. So we really leverage the reporting, right? So they, that really helped the management feel comfortable to see, you know, what are the metrics? Are we getting done what needs to be done? Who's performing and who isn't? Uh, so that, that was just another thing that really helped um, strengthen the, the need for our platform and the comfort, comfort level with it, with the Sky platform. So we found uh, reporting to be very helpful. Good. Uh, I, wanna bring Cor I wanna bring Corey in for a sec, a few minutes here to talk. Corey, what did we experience as a company that you saw that how we were able to weather the so-called COVID-19 early phase storm, because we're not out of it yet. But was there anything that you saw from a support side uh, across the board with resellers that we were doing that was helpful to them? Uh, well, a, a lot of it's been discussed already. Um, and some of it, uh, just as, as your example of, of us being a remote workforce and being able to provide guidance to to some resellers that that weren't doing and how we accomplish having people work from home uh as i'm sure many people know about before this happened about 50 percent um maybe a little more of sky switch's workforce is work from home uh so a lot of people were already really good at doing it they they knew what they were doing we trusted our employees to work from home and uh just being able to give the advice and, and what we do and, and how to get that mindset, as Lewis talked about, uh, was a, a big deal. Um, of course, there were things like uh, the, the REACH UC uh, scale up. Uh, as soon as it hit, we got hammered uh, on, on REACH UC where we didn't have the capacity and we were able to quickly implement or Blake, uh, our CTO was, was able to quickly implement that, that scalability solution, not only to solve the, the issue pretty quick, uh, I think it was about a day, but also uh, to future proof it so we can just add the infrastructure uh, easily as like a plug and play solution to scale further. Uh, just overall, uh, trying to be flexible and, and help people out during during these times in every sort of way we can. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. what I can offer. Okay, Corey, so, so here's what I'm hearing. I heard be flexible from Corey. I heard be consultive from a couple of you guys in the sense of it's not just about selling phone service or selling communications. You were counselors. You know, you, you, Dan, you mentioned that you gave them advice on how to do something and business is skyrocketing for them. That's a counselor role. That's not a wrote, that's not a formula salesperson. That's a consultative salesperson who makes your customer happy. And that's going to bring you other customers because word of mouth, not word of mouth, but word of mouth will get around in the Texas area to people who they know 
when someone says, who are you using for phone service? So I'm going to go to Dan because we've been, Dan Napolitano, we've been talking all about all the things that you did right or all the things you learned that will make you do more right things. But what's the old saying? Life's not a bowl of cherries. Uh, it's not all bed of roses. The, the, there, is some dark, there were some dark clouds that everybody probably had. And when we talked last week, you rattled off, of, I don't know, five or six items, items, issues that came up, not that were sky switch or not that were your company's problem, but problems your customers had that you had to overcome. So it might be good just to talk through some of those uh, and then I'll go around and see what problems customers brought to the group. And then I'm going to remind everybody that we have a Q&A towards the end of this. If you go into the Q&A window of the video conferencing service Zoom, put your questions in there. You're eligible to win SkySwitch swag. So, Dan, what were some of those unique challenges that reared their ugly head during COVID-19 that you had overcome? Yeah, Lewis mentioned some of them already, but um, SIP ALG on cable modems was, was a big problem. Now, we're also an IT firm. Um, so we just own those for our clients. We walk them through. We we don't like to tell our client, here's what you need to do, go do it. We like to do it with them for them. Um, and they pay for that, but it's a, you know, it's a white glove kind of service. Um, Xbox, <laughs> when their kids would wake up and turn on the Xbox, all of a sudden their video meetings would stop working. Um, so, you know, consultative things like that, you know, who's in your house, what are they doing? You know, oh, I've got three kids and they're distance learning and watching movies and playing video games. Um, and, you know, um, SD-WAN is a great solution for that problem, but, you know, it's not really practical in the home. Uh, so a lot of that was just a matter of educating our clients so that they knew, you know, hey, I've got a conference call and you can't be on the Xbox right now. Um, but, you know, we're fortunate our area has pretty good bandwidth. So that wasn't super prevalent, but it, it popped up. Um, Glance, I don't know if you guys know uh, about the Glance app um, that Guy Fox has, but it's fantastic for identifying SIP ALG right away. You know, BLF lights aren't working. Um, so our team, you know, those tools were pretty good for us to quickly identify those problems. Um, Trying to remember what else I told you, Andy. I think that was it. <laughs> oh, let me look at my list. Um, <laughs> limited bandwidth issues, home networking issues, Busy line function issues. That was another one you raised. Yeah. Yeah. And that was almost always SIP ALG. So for everybody who's out there, I mean, I'm sure most of the resellers understand it, but you know, years ago, I remember that we would groom our routers. Um, I was working with one of the large telcos as a client at bringing out their voice over IP product. And one of the things that differentiated that product was auto grooming where it would carve up a set of a chunk of the bandwidth to prevent that what can be done in the home today that you never would have thought of doing before because oh, I'm working from home an hour a day I'm, I'm not there eight ten hours a day so it no one really cared or they would oh I'll call you from my cell phone my internet's going wonky what are you doing today to mitigate that if you're not using SD-WAN what's the yes. what can be done yeah, so we, we're, if anybody uh, has heard of a product called Big Leaf, uh, which is a, a different type of SD-WAN product that's kind of cloud first, that sits in front of your firewall. We, we've had tremendous success with this product um, at all of our clients. They recently came out with a home product as a response uh, to these issues that, that Dan just spoke about uh, with everybody being at home. Um, and they've, th their product it, the pricing is, is based on a bandwidth usage model, but they've scaled it down to make it affordable, almost in a loss leader type of sense to help out their, their clients who have uh, home needs for this thing. But I, I can't say enough good things. Uh, if you haven't heard of Big Leaf, uh, not just for the home part, but if, if you're having any challenges with, with quality of service, um, you put this thing in and you stop hearing from the client. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Uh, what it's done for our business. So that, that's one product. We, we've only had to put it in once at, at a home spot where, where it was, you know, they're working from home and multiple kids and, you know, just crushing the network kind of thing. But um, it really sings when you have two connections, which most people at home wouldn't have. Uh, but even with one connection, 
the, the QoS and, and the, the packet prioritization it, it does um, is, yeah, it, it's tremendous how much it's helped our business. And Lou, is that a cloud managed service that you just go online, you set it up, you point your, you program your router to point to a certain IP address. How's it work? No, it's, it's kind of a hybrid system. So what it is, is there's a, a physical piece of hardware that they ship you. Um, it's, it's basically a, you know, like a little Linux computer, if you will, or it looks like a firewall, but your, your internet connections plug into it and they give you a, a new static public IP address. Uh, and then you plug their box into your existing firewall. So the, the, the nice thing is you don't have to change the firewall. It doesn't affect VPNs. It doesn't affect any rules you have on the firewall. Uh, but what they do is they use your, your multiple internet connections and create a tunnel from the customer site up to their uh, POPs, which are around the country. So they, they have insight into both of your WANs real time, and they can move things like VoIP calls in real time from one WAN to the other and, and prioritize whichever one has less latency, less jitter, less packet loss. Uh, and then of course you have a dashboard where you can see all of that uh, and you get emails if there's an alarm on a circuit, if a circuit all of a sudden is producing a lot of jitter, you can you know, call the client or open a ticket with the, with the internet provider. Uh, so it just gives you all this insight that you didn't have before. Uh, with a small business firewall, let's say. Obviously, higher-end firewalls have some of capabilities, uh, but if you have a, you know, a small business that has a two or $300 firewall, this thing, the statistics alone is worth the money. Uh, and just to be able to call the client and say, hey, one of your circuits is down, we need to get it back up in case the other one goes down. Uh, but the ability to have a, a live VoIP call not disconnect when they lose one, one of their circuits um, is, has paid for itself time and time again. But as most of you guys probably know, and any reseller will tell you, it's not the problem of the circuit going down. It's, for the lack of a better word, it goes wonky, right? I mean, co coax connections are famous for that. I, we, I'm sure we've all gotten those calls. Our, our internet's not working properly. Our, our voice quality is horrible. Well, like, you still have internet, your computers are working. Um, but it's, there's so much jitter on the circuit, you just can't do anything about it. So the, the Big Leaf has solved that problem for us. Uh, so there is, to an, finish answering your question, Andy, that there's the hardware part that goes up, uh, that, that goes in front of the firewall, and then you pay a monthly service fee for that ability of where the packet's going to their data center to do the prioritization before it then goes on to the final destination. And it's based on, on how fast your circuits are. Uh, but anyway, highly recommended, fantastic tech support, fantastic response times, but overall the, the product itself is, is just a winner and it's done wonders for our business. So you could literally have a cable modem coming, or cable connection coming into one of the, the WAN ports. You could have a mobile connection from one of the devices that's built for industrial grade, will keep running. Uh, I've seen brands like Peplink and, and others who, Incigo, who make industrial grade um, mobile LTE routers and soon 5G routers. You could plug one of them into each port and you're bond, now they're also, are they bonding the two connections as well or are they just allowing you to flip flop between the two? As far as I can tell, it, it, there's no bonding going on, uh, but you can have up to four WANs uh, and one right. of them, as you mentioned, being an LTE. Most, most of our customers will have a fiber circuit and a coax circuit. Um, or a coax and a DSL circuit. Um, mm -hmm. but, the, but the benefit is, is they can move packets around in real time based on which circuit is better at that exact moment. Um, That's great. And it's, it, they call it load balancing it is mm -hmm. essentially what it is, obviously. Um, but you can also set, let, let's say you only had a, a coax and an LTE that's limited in bandwidth per month. They have the ability to set the LTE as failover only. So if only if the coax goes down hard, level seven, then start using the LTE. Uh, but if you have unlimited connections, it, it's doing load balancing in, in real time. Okay. Andy, I just want to jump in there. We use Big Leaf too, and um, they're great. And you know, even any SD-WAN product uh, does the trick, but the load balancing is great. But even if you have a single ISP, um, you can, like we did testing when we first put it in, you can grind your internet to a halt with multiple downloads 
and we had like 15 phone calls and they all just stay up. So even with a single ISP, it solves the problem. So and, no that's where they're, that's where, and, and that's where their home product really comes in. Uh, you know, when you, when, when you put in just with one, it, it's the prioritization. I mean, having the second connection for big business is great, but uh, as Dan said, we, we've had the same success just with single circuits uh, because their algorithm is tuned for VoIP first. Super. Well, that's always good to hear about a new service. Uh, Chris O'Neill, was there something that, that really was a problem, a pain point for one, two, some of your customers, a lot of your customers, that you were able to wrap your arms around and say, this is happening, we have a solution, this is what we did, and this is what the outcome was? Yeah, so I think, as I was stating earlier, we relied heavily on the mobile app, and I we ran into some problems where people would be on the cellular data network and there'd be some call quality with that. And that, you, you know, as you know, you're kind of at the mercy of the network. So I, we haven't really come up with a solution for that, so to say. Um, but I would say, you know, the same thing as far as the home offices go, uh, I didn't know Big Leaf now had a product for the home. That's very, uh, that's interesting. We're, we're kind of a pep link shop, but um, we have looked at Big Leaf in the past that, I'm just going to probably have me look at it again, but we dealt with a lot of those pain points. Um, you know, I guess it wasn't maybe as bad as you guys were facing. I mean, we have pretty good bandwidth up in the Boston area, but um, you know, I don't have anything specific to point to on that uh, as far as getting through that. But, you know, the SIP ALG and things like that, we did have to help customers through. So the, the problem with wireless and having been in the wireless world as well as the wired world is referred to as the totem pole effect. And it's not well known by many people who haven't been in. I remember having lunch one day and ran into the, literally the inventor of cellular in America. And he was explaining this totem pole effect to me, which basically, remember, mobile networks were meant for cars coming by and driving by the towers. So each, one, each device that registers goes to the top of the totem pole. And then another one comes on, and another one comes on, and another one comes on. So as a new device enters that network, it pushes the previous devices down, 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 down. And so unless somebody would turn off their phone or receive a call or get a text message, they would keep getting pushed further down, which lowers the reception. So when you're on a data connection, the, the greater concentration of data use by that cell tower, the worse it's going to be. It's not your fault. It's not SkySwitch's fault. None of us can manage the radio network brand for the telecom. Um, I'm going to go to some questions in the last 10 minutes or so we have left. It was great that Corey was here because he answered Darren Sidweeks' question about the Glance app. Where do you find it and how does it work? Um, as Corey pointed out, you go to voipglance.com, V-O-I-P-G-L-A-N-C-E. I've talked to Guy. We're actually going to have Guy on in a few weeks' time to talk about Glance or a few months time to talk about Glance. Uh, he, he's one of you, he, telepath communications in the Tampa Bay area. He developed an app and it sounds like a lot of you are using it and it's really working. So um, if you don't know Guy, we can put you in touch with him. You can go to his website. Uh, everybody I've talked to loves Glance. So Corey, thanks for telling people how to find it. Uh, the next question that came up, really, I'm gonna throw right back at Lewis. Or Dan, he wants to know more about the cloud first product and where to get it. I guess he's talking about Big Leaf. Um, How is it sold? Who has it? Where do you get it? Can you give us some information? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have an MSP program. We, we were with them literally from the day they started business. Um, and they happen to be an Oregon company. Uh, so I, I actually know them personally, um, but they, they, it is sold through uh, the normal channels. If any of you guys have accounts with uh, any of the channel places, uh, but I, I would contact them directly at, at bigleaf.net and just have a conversation. Um, it's not a huge profit center for us, but it, it is a profit center. Um, so it, it's something that we try to sell with every deal. Um, as an insurance policy to make sure everything works uh, correctly for them. 
Uh, we've also thought about possibly even offering it free uh, on some of our deals uh, to make us look good and to make sure the customer doesn't have any issues. Uh, it's not that expensive where we couldn't do that in some deals, especially at, at our cost, uh, just you know, not make any money on it. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where you buy yours, Dan, but we, we still deal direct with Big Leaf. Yeah, we deal direct with Big Leaf too. Um, I had to sign on with a master agent. So our clients actually buy direct from Big Leaf so that it, I, I didn't want it, the cost of that device to tack on to our, our phone bill. Uh, because really nobody else sells SD-WAN. So I didn't want, when they're comparing apples to apples, I wanted to make sure that our invoices weren't $100 more a month because of Big Leaf. Um, but so they buy it directly from Big Leaf and then we get 16% a month ongoing, which is nice. Yeah, it sounds like it's something we should be looking into either the Big Leaf product or something similar itself and bring it back to you guys to tell us what you think. Joe Bauer had a question for each of you um, he wanted to know how many employees you have in your company and how many of those are technicians. So, uh, Dan being at your front and center right now, what's your number of people and how many are techs? There's 12 of us. Three are non-technical. Everybody else is technical. So nine, nine techs. Um, Chris, what about you? So I have 11 and four of them, uh, I'm sorry, five of them are technical. And then we have sales office manager and, a little bit of fat at the top. Okay. Um, what about you, Lewis? Uh, it's my wife and I. Uh, my wife handles all of our documentation, uh, SEO, website, any type of communication that goes out to, to the clients as well. Uh, I handle sales and, and support. Uh, so it, I think it probably helps to, to give a, a frame of reference maybe as to how many, if, if everybody else is open to saying it, I am, but, uh, you know, we have about a thousand seats on the platform. Um, so obviously it depends on, you know, how much resources you need, but that's one of the things I love about this business. I think it's, it's very scalable uh, in terms of how many people you need to support. I don't know what that ratio is. I'm curious to know what your ratios are. Um, but I feel like, you know, two people could probably handle three, 4,000 seats. Uh, but maybe I'm dreaming. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But, uh, that, that's just where we are at the point at this point just just the two of us okay next question will be comes from bill smith this is a really good question how did you guys handle 911 from the devices that went home with the customer's staff and he's not he's only referring to hard phones because he knows that with reach uc mobility it wasn't really an issue what did you guys do i'll go with dan crable first I mean, ours was very simple. We sent out a blanket email several times to our customers telling them that, hey, if you take your devices home, please let us know so we can re-register them or they could log into their portal doing it or they could do it themselves. But we just kept re-emphasizing to them, hey, if you take your device home, we need to re-register that device for the 911 in case you use it for a 911 purpose. Okay, Dan Napolitano, what did you do? Yeah, I the G911 is a real hot issue, no matter yeah. what, because it costs you money if you make a mistake. Right, plus the liability. Um, so, you know, Glance again, um, Guy just redid Glance and the new version has some really nice features, but we produced an email, sent it to every client's decision maker, letting them know all of their um, DIDs that need E911 and what it currently is set to. And then they get an automate, they get that email automated on a monthly basis. Um, and that comes from Glance. Okay. So it's in um, front of them all the time. Lewis, what did you guys do? Yeah, same thing. We, we sent out an email. Uh, again, as Dan mentioned, having that E911 report uh, from Glance, we have that email to us once a week so we can make sure that we haven't made any mistakes because it's very easy to spot if you don't have an address on a phone in that Glance report. Um, probably not as challenging because we don't have as many uh, phones on the, on the platform, but uh, it was definitely a challenge just to keep up with it. Yeah. Okay. Any closing words of wisdom? I'll go to Corey, Fareed. Anything you guys want to add that, you know, from something that came into support while we were all, you know, busily doing other things. Corey, was there any one thing or Fareed, any one thing that you saw that really 
help resellers overcome the challenges of COVID-19? Nothing from me. <laughs> Nothing from you. Okay. Guys, I want to thank you all. We, we're, we're at the top of the hour. We had a great audience of a good number of resellers. I'm quite happy with the outcome of the number of people who joined us. You guys have been saints. You've been heroes. You've been, you know, gods on the Mount Olympus of telecommunications for your customers because what it sounds like is you were able to help them help themselves by providing them the kind of support, kind of counseling, insight, experience, and helpfulness when they needed it, and they still do. And what you've also walked away with a ton of lessons. And it, are you guys all okay? If any of the other resellers need to reach out to you, they can, and they can find you and all those good things. Great. Absolutely. I want to thank. Yeah, Corey. and absolutely. And, and I just want to mention again, in case anybody joined late, uh, the SkySwitch user group on Slack, uh, you yeah. can go to OregonPhoneSystems.com slash SkySwitch uh, to sign up. We'd love to have uh, more resellers in the group to share, share thoughts and ideas. Well, we, we thank you for that and for helping. And most of all, thank you all for taking an hour out of your day. To our resellers online, watch for the webinar rewind. It comes out tomorrow. Emily, Erica, thank you for your incredible production support. Uh, we will include in the webinar rewind who gets that great exclusive, only available from SkySwitch swag that you can be wearing. I'm Andy Abramson, the Chief Marketing Officer. On behalf of my Dear friend and colleague, Vice President of Support, Corey Stoker and Fareed, thank you all. Stay safe and stay connected. Thanks, Andy. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, guys.